Hello, Josh. 29 years ago today, you were thrust into existence with no choice of your own, which means it's your birthday! Happy birthday! So for your birthday this year, I'm going to give you a little history lesson. If you want the Cliff Notes version, you can watch a movie about this guy. Uh, it's extremely historically inaccurate, and it stars an incredible racist, but uh, that's up to you. We're going to celebrate with you by going to the Wallace National Monument, which is just behind me right there. Good Jesus. There's a lot of hills. You're lucky we love you. Yeah, this is for you. Hang on, I haven't caught my breath. So we finally made it, and this is the view from the top here. And there's the Sterling University there. And then here's the monument. There's Mr. Wallace himself. And a sweaty Lex. All right, so Josh, as you may or may not know, Lex and I have moved to Stirling, Scotland, which was the uh, royal seat of Scotland for many, many centuries, and uh, William Wallace played a huge role in making that actually happen. Also, side note, Josh, if you'll take note here, you will see that it is not only American birds that shit on national monuments, but Scottish birds as well. So because of Stirling's central location within Scotland, a lot of battles happened here to gain independence for Scotland, especially for the... Uh, Stirling Castle, which you can see behind me over that way. In order to get to the Highlands or the Lowlands, you kind of have to pass through Stirling. So what made William Wallace actually famous was in 1297, just over this way, there's a little bridge that crossed the River Forth. And uh, William Wallace uh, led his battle to defeat the British at that bridge, which maintained Stirling Castle for a little while. So that is why the monument sits right up here because the hill we're standing on is where uh, he staged his forces to flank the British troops and uh, win the battle. Also, it's time to sit down and take a break because hills and, and stairs, it's, it's not for me. Wallace defeated an army that was much larger than his, and he did so using tactics. Uh, he, he didn't engage in chivalrous military uh, sort of combat. He, he bombarded them at a bridge, and he cut their forces in half, and he destroyed them. Uh, he put so much weight on the bridge that the bridge actually collapsed, and that's how most of the British soldiers actually died. They drowned in the river. Um, and then there was uh, this guy, I think his name was Hugh Cassockman or something like that, and he was actually the English treasurer for uh, Scotland, so he collected taxes. Uh, he died during the battle, and then they took a knife and skinned him, and people used little bits of his skin as tokens for how awesome the battle was. Moreover, Wallace himself took a piece of, a broad piece of his skin from the back of his neck down to his back, and he uh, fashioned a bald kirk out of it, which is basically like a Klingon war belt that you hold, uh, hold stuff in, like your sword. Speaking of the sword, that's supposed to be here at the monument. Four and a half feet tall. Wallace's battle at Stirling Bridge, while important at the time, uh, wasn't actually that decisive of a victory. It was more of an emotional victory. He stood up to the bully, which is something that Scotland hadn't done really well up until that point. And that's the only thing that really made him famous. He wasn't even that great of a military leader, apparently. A year after the Battle of Stirling Bridge, there was a Battle of Falkirk, uh, where he went and fought and lost. And this is where some of the controversy surrounding him actually comes up. A lot of people think that he might have been a traitor at that point because they can't admit that he was actually a terrible military leader and that he would have lost a battle that decisively. Um, some people thought that maybe he just never was a good military leader and he just lucked out at the Battle of Stirling. Um, nobody really knows. It doesn't really matter because what happens after that is he goes on the run for a while and then Famously, he's captured, and he's uh, hanged, drawn, and quartered. And they did actually hang him, not to kill him, but they did it just to hurt him. And then they uh, disemboweled him and burned his uh, entrails in front of him, very violently. Uh, that's one thing that Braveheart gets right. Uh, I don't think he screamed freedom, though. So the Scottish Wars for Independence are very long and complex, and they lasted from, you know, before William Wallace's time all the way through until last year with the Scottish referendum for independence. Which... But anyway, let's go, uh, let's go look at the sword. Even more stairs. This has been like 753, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, wait, I lost track. Point is, it's a lot of stairs. You're lucky I love you. Remember, this is all for you. <laughs> and here's a view from the top, and there's the river. 
that he defended, and there's Sterling. I came up all this way just to let you know that uh, I hope you have a happy birthday, and I hope you've enjoyed some of the stuff that I've, I've said today. Um, and on that one more quick note, uh, all this sort of stuff with William Wallace, the really interesting thing that I've noticed ever since I started living here in Scotland is that his actual events, everything that actually happened in 1297, why he's actually famous, why Mel Gibson actually made a movie about him, uh, doesn't really matter. What actually happened isn't the point. What he, What's made him important is how he has embraced sort of the national spirit and his legacy has uh, made more of an impact than his actual actions. But uh, anyway, uh, I would say I hope that you have fun tonight, but your birthday happened to land on a Friday, so I know that you're going to have fun. Uh, and tell everybody I said hi, and have a good one, brother. Oh, and one more thing. This is uh, awesome. <laughs> Just so you see. So from the top of the Royal Seat of Scotland, have a good birthday. Damn it, I'm an idiot. There was a room in there with a bunch of heads, and I could have totally done a good pun where I said, you know, most of the monuments pretty cool to see, but this room's a bust. Ha ha ha!